Hey there! In this video, I want to show you how to make the perfect bed for your Airbnb apartment. Many hosts neglect this, unfortunately, but the bed is the central piece of your rental unit. If you have the budget to improve your place, you should put most of it into the main bed. A perfectly designed bed will have two outcomes. First, you will have more bookings because you will make an attractive picture of that bed, which will make more travelers click on your listing. And second, you will get better ratings from your guests because they will sleep comfortably. Don't forget that having a bunch of amenities and extra stuff like a Netflix subscription and whatnot is great, of course, but your guests come to your place to sleep before anything else. And if you nail that sleeping experience for them, you'll get amazing results. I'll also provide you with approximate prices for all the stuff that I will be covering here so you know how much you would need to invest in order to create the perfect bed while being cost efficient, meaning the best quality that you should use for your rental unit without overpaying for the most luxurious versions. So there are three things to make that perfect bed. One, the quality of the mattress, pillows and covers. Two, the quality of the linen. And three, how you display all of that on the bed to make a perfect picture and a great first impression. I will use my own room here in my apartment to show you everything. It's not my rental apartment because, well, those are mostly booked, so I don't really have the time to shoot a video there. Although there are some components that I'm missing, but generally it will be a good enough example. So when it comes to the mattress, that's where you should focus the biggest chunk of your budget. It should cost more than a typical bed frame and it has to be thick. This is important. At least 20 to 25 centimeters, which is about 9 inches thick. The price for a good mattress starts from about $400 and beyond that you get better and better quality, but it's unnecessary unless you're doing luxury. 9 to 12 inches is already very good and I wouldn't recommend you to explode your budget to go above that. When it comes to the size of your mattress, the minimum is to have a standard double bed. But ideally, you should aim for a queen size bed. There is a slight difference in bed sizes when it comes to the US and Europe. In US, a regular double bed, also known as standard, is 53 inches wide. And in Europe, it's 140 centimeters, which is slightly bigger. And same for the queen size. In US, it's 60 inches and in Europe, it's 160 centimeters. Again, a bit bigger. And just in case, if you ever considered using a foldable sofa or you have one, trust me, get rid of these things. They are never really comfortable. You should only use them in cheap rental units where you absolutely have no possibility to put a regular bed. So a standard double bed is the minimum, but I recommend queen size for more comfort. King size is too much, so queen is exactly the perfect solution. Now, when you have your main mattress, you should add a mattress topper on it. So yeah, it's basically a mattress on top of your mattress, but it's very good for rental units because it provides more comfort. You feel like you are sinking into that cocoon bed. It adds an ultra soft layer on top of your firm mattress. So yes, it's an extra thing. It's not mandatory, but I absolutely recommend it for a better experience. The mattress topper should rather be synthetic because anything natural is great, but it's very expensive and more difficult to maintain. And also, if you can't find one that is waterproof, resistant to dust mites, stains and stuff, it's always better. Usually, good mattress toppers run for at least $200. Now, you need to protect all of this with a mattress protector. This one must absolutely be water resistant to withstand all the potential bodily fluids, you know. I mean, you're into several hundreds of dollars of investment already and you don't want it to be damaged. But that's not expensive. You can find good mattress protectors for about $40. Now let's move on to the pillows. First of all, I advise once again to buy synthetic stuff. The reason for this is first of all financial, it's cheaper. But also, natural stuff requires much more attention in order to maintain its longevity. So even though natural is of course better, it's not optimized for a short-term rental business. Also, some people can be allergic to goose and duck feathers, which is another reason not to use natural bedding. You can use this kind of stuff for your personal bed, and actually, what I have here is natural, but for your short-term rental, better use synthetic. Now, what about the number and kind of pillows that you should use? I recommend at least four pillows on your bed. 
two big square ones and two smaller rectangular ones. But once again, there is a big difference in standards between North America and Europe. In Europe, the square one that I recommend should be 65 by 65 centimeters. That would be 25 by 25 inches, but I'm not sure what is the equivalent in the US. And the rectangular ones are 50 by 70 centimeters, which is 20 by 30 inches. So regardless of the exact sizes, just keep in mind that you should have two bigger pillows behind and two smaller pillows in front of them. Why? There are two reasons for this. First of all, it looks very beautiful and welcoming, so it's great from a design perspective. But also, the main idea is to give your guests options on which kind of pillow they prefer to sleep. Pillows mainly differ in firmness, there can be thin or soft pillows, medium and firm. And different firmness better fits different sleeping positions. For example, on your stomach, on your back or on the side. So I recommend to use medium pillows as the big, square ones, the ones that are behind, and firm pillows as the smaller, rectangular ones. You don't really need soft pillows because they are particularly suited for people who sleep on their stomach and they are the minority of the population. And for them, the medium pillow will do the job anyway. So pay attention to this and have at least two types of pillows, medium and firm. Keep in mind that these are all hotel standards and you can get inspiration from them. Some hotels do offer all the three kinds of pillows to their guests, but I don't recommend it for your short-term rental from a return on investment perspective. But otherwise, yes, there is a reason hotels do this, it's not a coincidence, so it's always safe to use their techniques. Now let's talk about the cover. The one that you want to use will mainly depend on the location of your listing, meaning your climate, and how well heating and air conditioning works in your unit. For example, around the Mediterranean, the temperatures are never too hot and never too cold. But in a place like New York, you go from one extreme to the other. So there are four types of covers. I'm not sure if I'm using the correct terms here, but it goes more or less like this. There are light covers, which feed rooms with temperatures above 22 degrees Celsius or 72 Fahrenheit. Then there are warm covers for cold temperatures below 18 degrees or 65 Fahrenheit. And then there are standard ones, which are adapted for mid-season temperatures in between, not too hot, not too cold. Finally, there are also all-season comforters, and usually these are two light and standard covers attached to each other, so you can use them as you prefer. Some hosts go as far as having several types of covers and changing them according to the seasons, but I don't recommend it, of course, because once again, this is not cost-efficient. So I suggest you to proceed like this. If you live in an area with a rather cold climate all year long, somewhere north or in the mountains, then obviously choose a warm cover. But if you live south in usually hot areas, then use light ones. And for everything in between or where you go from one extreme to the other, use standard covers but have good heating and air conditioning systems in your room so your guests can easily set their preferred temperature. And if you don't have good enough systems to regulate temperature, then go with a Four Seasons cover. Whichever you choose, once again, go with synthetic for all the same reasons as for the pillows and choose products that are resistant to dust mites. I suggest you to buy these kinds of things from specialized shops that sell to hotels because otherwise you will not find good quality products. You can usually buy packs of two pillows and a cover together that makes it cheaper. It can cost somewhere around $250 and even as low as $150 during sales. And then you buy two additional pillows to complete the set as I explained previously and this will be around $80 for both pillows. Finally, last thing about the cover is the size. So here there are very clear guidelines for how large a cover should be depending on the size of your mattress, but the idea is that it covers it completely and then falls on either side of the bed down to the bed frame. You can easily find these guidelines on the internet for the size of your mattress, so I'll let you do it by yourself. Now that we talked about the pillows and the cover, let's see which kind of lining you should buy for all of this. Generally speaking, for the bed sheet, the cover and the pillow covers, you should always use cotton, stick to the basics. But cotton can be of different quality and there are also different kinds. If you have a bigger budget, I suggest you to buy sateen. What mainly changes is the thread count, meaning how closely knit are the cotton threads between them. The more, the better. It will be more robust and resistant to washings and so will last longer. But it's also softer, more pleasant to touch. 
However, the measure of this is very different from USA to Europe and I didn't manage to find the right equivalency. But basically, in the US, you should look for linen with at least 400 threads per square inch and in Europe, you should look for at least 90 threads per square centimeter. But it's even better to go beyond 118 threads. If you take something very low on this scale, it will be weak and feel cheap. And if you're wondering why I don't recommend linen, it's once again because of difficult maintenance. Linen is great, but it must be taken care of. For example, you can't even tumble dry it, so it's not efficient. Finally, the last thing, don't screw up the sizes of your bed linen. They must, of course, correspond perfectly to the sizes of your cover and pillows. And when it comes to the main bed sheet, watch out here because it must be big enough to cover the mattress, the mattress topper and the mattress protector. So you have to take that extra height into account. Now, what about the color of your bed linen? The answer is very easy. It must be white unless your rental is very cheap, in which case it doesn't matter. But if you want to make a good professional impression, you need only white stuff. Again, there's a reason why hotels only use white linen. They nailed it since a long time already. So first of all, white linen looks clean. There is no other color that can transmit the same pure visual impression. But white linen also lasts longer because although a stain is more visible on white than on color, you can bleach it with special products. So white is the only color that you can sort of repair. You can't do that with other colors. And last thing, if you buy white linen, you can standardize it if you have multiple units or even with just one unit. For example, if guests damage just one item, it's much easier to replace with white than looking for exactly the same type and color. You will need at least two sets of linen for the cleaning rotation, but having a third set can come in handy if one of yours is damaged by guests. Ideally, once again, buy them from a company that sells to professionals like hotels and avoid mass retail because you don't usually find high quality there. A set of sateen for everything I mentioned here runs for about $220, so if you double that for cleaning rotation, you'll be at around $440. But once again, you can often find that on sale for half the price. Finally, to end this video, you need some decoration on your bed to make it look perfect. First of all, you probably noticed that I'm missing something here, which is a headboard. It creates a beautiful visual impression, it looks good on pictures, it creates a cozy feeling and your wall behind it stays clean. Then, you need to have a throw blanket like this. And to make it look nice, fold a bit of your comforter on top of it. Make sure that your throw blanket is at least of the same width as your comforter, so it covers the bed entirely, otherwise it won't look good. A good throw costs around 70 bucks. And finally, you need at least two decorative pillows like this ones, and you put them in front here. There is no definite standard. Some hosts put yet more pillows, but I think that two is enough. What's important is that both your throw and your decorative pillows fit the general design of your room and that they be of a soft color. Avoid anything flashy like red, orange, etc. because you want people to calm down and relax, so use soft and calming colors. You might think that some of these things are overblown, that you don't need to do that much, but that's wrong. The point is that if you make a nice bed like this, it will look good on pictures and therefore it will make you look professional, not like an amateur host. And it will attract more people to your listing. Finally, just as a bonus, you can display your nice white towels on the bed as well, like this. First of all, fold them in two and then roll them while keeping the main pattern visible and then put one on top of the other. Once again, it will look great on pictures and very welcoming to your guests when they arrive. If you want to learn more great techniques for your short-term rentals, take a look at my two best-selling courses in the description below. One of them is called Airbnb Entrepreneur and it will help you start renting on Airbnb and become a successful host in your town. The other one is called Airbnb Automations and it will teach you absolutely insane techniques to optimize your Airbnb business and save you countless hours of your time. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel to learn more stuff like this in my next videos. See you!